So welcome everybody. Thanks for joining. My name is Aaron, as uh, Eric alluded. I'm one of the solution engineers here at HashiCorp. And today I want you to imagine a world where every minute saved on VM template creation and utilization is a minute you earn for working on some type of new innovation or freeing up some time to increase your security posture, resolve some kind of environment stability issue. Today, I want to talk about revolutionizing, revolutionizing vSphere VM management. My aim by the end of this session is for you all to gain a little deeper insight into how Packer and Terraform can streamline and enhance uh, your workflows for creating and utilizing vSphere templates. Because the thing is, most people are managing vSphere templates inefficiently. Now, just to be super clear on this statement, it's not meant to undermine the talent and hard work of our VI admins. Instead, it's a recognition of the intricate and challenging environment that they work within daily. To unpack this a little, I want to uh, talk about two particular personas. Anita, our VI administrator, and Scott, a developer who just wants to focus on writing and testing application code. So let's unfold the narrative of what a common template pattern for both these personas looks like that I've seen numerous times. We start with Anita, who is our VI administrator. Now, Anita has the responsibility of creating a base template. So to do so, Anita will need to log into the vCenter UI. This allows Anita to have a platform where templates can be created. Now, Anita's workflow surrounding vSphere templates and the organization stands is heavily reliant on manual effort, involving a multitude of tasks that are both time consuming and prone to human error. First, Anita needs to log in with the right account and the right permissions. She needs to initialize, come up with some type of naming convention for this template. She needs to select the right cluster, network, data store. Now comes probably the slowest part, which is actually installing the operating system without uh, VMware tools, which can be cumbersome. Uh, next, we have to patch, maybe get security involved to patch and make sure it's at the right pro level. And then we shut down the VM, convert it to a template. And then finally, we notify our consumers. However, if Anita had multiple vCenter servers to manage distinct isolated environments, so think you're, think you're like your dev, dev test production kind of scenario, this compounds the complexity, the management overhead, and the operational response time. Now, once the template's created, it's over to Scott, our developer, who can now use it for his application development. So Scott's workflow for, workflow for utilizing this template looks a little like this. First, Scott has two options. He either needs to understand the vSphere UI or API, or alternatively, which is a more common approach, he raises a ticket to type some type of system and utilizes a self-service portal. In either scenario, once the VM is cloned and powered on, usually there's a bunch of post-provisioning steps that need to occur. So Scott has to wait. Because we've completed because we haven't completed any real customization on that base template being used that Anita created, and that's because customization is routinely performed after the creation without any integrated early build process. Once this has occurred and the initial setup has been completed, now Scott gets to do his responsibility. That installs the, app, the necessary application, injecting configuration files. However, even this step introduces a level of complexity keeping track of the configurations applied to this instance of this machine can be a puzzle. Determining which version of a template he was utilizing versus another instance, this can quickly become a source of confusion. Now, I would say there's a few areas in this workflow that could be improved. And it might be obvious, but the manual process of creating and managing vSphere templates is slow and challenging, burdened by that GUI-driven approach. It really isn't scalable. The task Anita had to complete was for creating one base template in one environment. Now, this would be need to be repeated for any other operating systems Anita supports. Because we're only talking about one template thus far, there's an absence of template layering, which can impre impede prompt security response, affecting agility and addressing vulnerabilities. From Scott's workflow, there's an uncertainty of what type of template he was using at what time waiting for some type of notification from Anita on when a new template is available can be challenging. And that post VM provisioning customization that I spoke about lowers the reliability of an uh, of chance of an increased failure during Scott's requested workflow. So this begs the question, is there a better workflow? How do we streamline and automate vSphere templates with Packer? 
let's quickly discuss some of the fundamental and foundational solutions that we're going to use from now on. So first is Packer. So Packer standardizes and automates the process of building systems and container images. It's what will create our templates, which can then be leveraged and managed through HCP Packer, which stores just the metadata about the artifacts that we create with Packer. So HCP Packer is really the bridging the gap between artifact creation and deployment by allowing cross organizational teams to create, manage and consume artifacts using a centralized, consistent, standardized workflow. And then finally, Terraform. So everyone should be familiar and love Terraform. Terraform is the infrastructure as code solution that enables you to safely and predictably provision resources with those imaged artifacts into any cloud. So let's take a look at a workflow where we use HashiCorp Pack and Terraform, where we gain the benefits of automation, consistency, versioning, and so on. This time, we're going to use a pipeline. If you've never heard of GitHub Actions, GitHub Actions is an automation tool that basically allows you to simply build, test, and deploy your code. This is a strategic change to leverage a pipeline. This becomes a single well-designed workflow that a needer has to establish once and then can, it can perform consistently on her behalf. The efficiency gain translates to scalability. Instead of being constrained to manually craft one template at a time, we can now orchestrate the creation of multiple packet images concurrently. And that's at the heart of scalability, doing more with less, expanding our capabilities without proportionally increasing our efforts. In our pipeline, we'll distill the process into a, a, a few series uh, straightforward steps. First is simply selecting the image we want to build. Do we want to build one base operating system image? Do we want to build multiple base operating system images? Or do we want to build multiple application images? It's quite simple. The next is initializing with the Packer init command. This command's really going to be the first command you ever run with Packer, and it essentially just downloads the plugin binaries. Then we execute the Packer build. This is the workhorse and the main process. It's basically taking our predefined settings that we have defined in code and using them to produce a suite of artifacts like templates. Then we can leverage, if we want to, Packer provisioners. This allows you to enhance it into you know, third-party products and solutions to say, I want to execute necessary software onto this up onto this operating system, apply system updates, maybe configure certain settings that meet operational standards. And then finally, we just register with HCP Packer. So this is the system of recording the metadata about our artifacts, you know, the creation time, the associated platform, the git commit that correlates to the build. This repository ensures there's traceability, accountability, and reproducibility across our pipeline. Now, let's reintroduce Scott again, our developer who's going to leverage the power of HCP Packer through Terraform to build the infrastructure he requires. We're also going to introduce Jane, another skilled developer on the team. Jane's workflow is similar to Scott's, but there's a key difference. Jane wants to use a different version to her builds, and that is what HCP Packer Channels lets you do. A channel allows you to label an artifact with a describe the quality and stability of a build. So Scott may want to use the latest channel, always integrating with the most recent updates and features, where Jane may want to use the LTS version or the long-term support channel, which offers greater stability and longer intervals between upgrades. They can simply use the desired Terraform module to build their virtual machine and then utilize Terraform Cloud to direct on their laptops to execute the plan and apply for their infrastructure. So let's have a look at what that looks like in the real world. So I'm going to click off over to uh, GitHub where we're going to talk about our action, though I spoke about that pipeline. So this is a repository called Packer Images. It's publicly available. More than happy to give this to you guys after the session. But basically inside this repository is our code to use Packer. I've got an action that we mentioned and I've broken that into two different pipelines or workflows, one for base images that will build off an ISO and application images that will clone off the base and leverage what we've done with our base image and just then layer it with the applications. So this is really easy and simple to use. 
Normally you would schedule your workflows to run on a scheduled process. And that's what I have in this environment. But for today in the demo, I'm gonna override that and say, let's just go and build the latest and greatest Postgres machine. So I can click on a particular image that I wanna build and click run workflow. Now that's gonna go and trigger, but as I said, you could have this scheduled to say, let's execute every Sunday night at 10 o'clock. So then following week, we have new greatest latest patched templates for our de developers to use. Now it's been executed by the fact that there's a little amble dot here. So if I can click on that particular flow and we can see that our pipeline has executed. If I click on it, we'll see some information about our build. So we can see that we've ran a command called make Ubuntu 2204 underscore Postgres, and that's executed the packer initialize and packer build commands that I mentioned earlier. We're going to deep dive a little bit further into what that looks like, but really what's happening right now is this post, this pipeline has gone to execute my pipeline, communicate with the vSphere server, and go and build a virtual machine for me inside vSphere. So we'll let that go for a little bit and see how we, pro uh, how we progress. Let's go over and have a look at the actual underlying packer images, uh, packer files. So what I've got now is Visual Studio Code, and this is just a cloned version of that repository that I just showed you. So inside the .github uh, folder, I have those two pipelines in code in YAML. Inside here, there's not too much to really talk about specifically, but the fact that I'm executing a pipeline and I'm just executing a make file and selecting the image is the key piece of this pipeline. Under the hood, that make file is executing our packet initialize and our packet build command that you saw in the pipeline. What we're doing is we're passing it a Postgres specific variables file, as well as telling it to go and get the additional configuration for Packer inside a directory called builds Linux Ubuntu 2204. So let's go and see how Packer's using those files. If I go further into builds Linux Ubuntu 2204, there's two key Packer files that I want to mention. The first is our build.packer.htl file. This file is really defining the plugins that we want to leverage. The first one being that vSphere plugin. The second may be some type of provisioner, like our Ansible plugin. That allows me to specify a playbook that I want to execute as part of my provisioning of my template process. The last piece in this file is the HCP Packer registry block. And this allows me to say, after the Packer process is complete, go and register it with HCP Packer and store some metadata about that image. This might be the bucket name, which is basically a label, uh, as well as any other bits of information about the, the image. The second file is the sources.packer.hcl file. In here, there's again, a little bit of information that we wanna focus on. One is the source block. So I have a vSphere-ISO block. So if I wanna build a machine from complete scratch, like my base images, that would be leveraging this block. Alternatively, I can also leverage the, let me get to it, the, oh, the vSphere-clone block. So that allows me to execute a clone of an existing template. In either scenario, all we're defining inside these files is one, how do we connect to vSphere? Where do we want to build the machine? What data center, what cluster, what data store, what folder, and any additional virtual machine configuration that we want to specify as part of our machine build. So this could be, do we want to convert it to a template? Yes or no, true or false. What's the CPU memory? What's the storage configuration, the network configuration? Where's the ISO to go and mount this machine to? and any additional pieces of information about the template that I wanna build. They're the two main files that Packer will leverage to go and build a machine. The last is basically that variables file, and that variables file is a unique to each image that I wanna build. And so in Postgres, all I'm doing is passing it a role, which relates to the Ansible playbook to go and execute. That role called Postgres will go and execute an Ansible playbook that goes and installs Postgres. So let's go and take, have a look at see what's happened and our image is built. That's as quickly as it takes to go and build a new template. So we've completed our machine template process and we're good to go. Now, what does that look like from a HCP 
point of view. So I'm going to now select over to HCP. And this is where HCP Packer has this concept of buckets. There's a lot of information here. I want to go through some of the fundamentals just to get you familiar. The first one is this concept of a bucket. So these buckets are the logical relationship between those images that I just built. So if we look at our Postgres Ubuntu-2204, I can click on that bucket and it's going to give me some information. First, what is the latest version of a template that I can use? So I have version 54. It was created at 144, so a couple of minutes ago, and it's active. I can go into versions and see other versions that I may have available. And you can see here, this is where that concept of a channel comes in. I have two versions of a Postgres template. Version 48, which is the stable or maybe the LTS version. And then I have version 54, which is the latest version. What that means now is that I can leverage Terraform to consume this template without needing to know any specific concepts or pieces of information inside vSphere. If I want to do that, that's really simple. I can go to use with Terraform and get the data source block that tells me how to leverage this inside Terraform. So if I want to modify this, I could select what channel to use, the latest or the stable, and all that's going to change is this block is going to be dynamic to tell me which piece of information to update on. So let's say we want to use the latest. I could simply copy that. And now we could go back to Visual Studio Code, where I have two example repositories for Scott and Jane to, that are using Terraform. So in this example here, both these directories, both these folders are exactly the same thing. They're basically some Terraform code to go and build a vSphere machine. The important piece here is I can leverage that HCP Packer registry to say, this is the template I want to use. So I could just put that in there and then specify the template for this vSphere virtual machine module to go and leverage that particular identifier. That means from Scott and Jane's perspective, they can just do their traditional Terraform apply command, and it's going to go and build a machine via Terraform Cloud and use the template that is available from the organization's perspective that is the latest and greatest version or a stable version that they want to use. Jane, again, can do the exact same thing. The only difference is, She's using the stable version. So again, if I click to Jane's command, I can do Terraform apply, and that's gonna go and off to the races, build my machines for me. And that's really as simple as it gets when it comes to consuming Terraform via HCP Packer. So why was that much, why was that much more efficient than previously? Well, the beauty of the automated template pattern is that it liberates Anita from the manual toil. Instead of being bogged down by repetitive tasks, Anita is now free to focus on that higher value work. The automation not only streamlines the process, but ensures this consistency, reducing the potential for human error and accelerates the overall delivery. From Scott and Jane's perspective, they get to use the power of HTTP packet channels for their delivery for their development environments, allowing them to choose different versions of a template, like the latest or the LTS or the stable version. The key aspect from a developer's point of view is that they can leverage Terraform for vSphere environments, just like they have used for public cloud environments. And as we transition from on-prem environment, maybe to an AWS environment, the process remains comfortably familiar for Scott and Jane. The seamless integration with HCP Packer ensures that the switch to a different cloud is just a matter of specifying a new endpoint. It's the same dependable pattern, no matter which cloud they choose, because you can have multiple clouds, but you can't have two ways of operating them. So to summarize, Hopefully what you've seen today is a portion of the HashiCorp solutions, and there's three key themes that we focus on. Cost control, risk mitigation, and increased developer pro productivity. From cost, we can think about the operational costs we are, talk we are taking while manually conducting all those image-related tasks across different environments. We can mitigate risk by ensuring our images meet security standards before they even leave the door. Rather than trying to patch afterwards, we can build the patching process as we build our templates through Packer. And for speed, we can let our developers focus on their core task, innovating, not waiting for infrastructure needed to support their efforts. And that's it from a presentation today. Uh, if you have any questions regarding this presentation, please reach out afterwards as well. If there's anything that comes up afterwards, more than happy to discuss.